If you're trying to decide between a solar power backup system and a traditional generator backup system to protect your house from a loss of the electric grid, then you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to break down the pros and cons of each approach so you can determine what's the best course of action for you and your family. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And for the past eight years, I've been helping families get their household set up to survive a loss of the electric grid. And in that time, I've done over 500 homes. Chances are, if you're watching this channel, it means that you have some interest in solar power and renewable energy. And you're probably torn between installing a traditional grid-tied solar power system to help save money on your electric bill, or installing solar with battery backup so that you can not only save money on your bill, but also protect your home from a power outage. Of course, the other traditional option for protecting your home would be a fuel burning generator, or sometimes called a standby generator. And what I'm gonna do with this video is try to help you understand the pros and cons of each approach so that you can make the best decision for you and your family. Let's take a look at the solar power system first. The advantage with solar, of course, is that it's truly renewable. Once the system is installed, there's zero ongoing maintenance cost or fuel cost, right? The sunlight provides the renewable energy source day in and day out, so you don't have to worry about uh, purchasing or storing fuel. The other advantage with solar is there's no counterparty risk, meaning that you will have physical custody of your solar energy generation and if you do the battery backup with your solar system, you'll have physical custody of the battery right there on your property. That means in a time of crisis, potentially, you don't have to worry about going out trying to buy fuel or having to, to purchase fuel ahead of time and try to store large amounts of fuel. So it's a completely uh, self-sufficient system with zero counterparty risk. Uh, as I touched on earlier, there's also no operating cost or maintenance cost. Uh, the solar and battery system is a, is a solid state system, meaning that there's, there's no mechanical moving parts that would wear out or break down over time. So it's not something where you're going to have to plan for a, uh, a semi-annual or an annual maintenance plan like what you would have with the generator. Now, some of the drawbacks of the solar power system that you have to make sure you plan for is that it is a finite energy source. Each day, your solar panels are only gonna harvest a certain amount of energy. And typically we're gonna measure that in kilowatt hours, KWH. So let's say for example, this system here harvests 25 kilowatt hours per day, then that is really all that you have to use in terms of energy available to you that day. You know, when you're talking about a solar backup system, you're gonna to wanna to have an energy budget. And much like you budget your finances, you're going to want to say, okay, if I have 25 kilowatt hours of energy available, how do I want to spend that energy? Do I want to use more for air conditioning or running the oven? Or would I rather conserve more for keeping the refrigerator running longer or running my water pump? So you're really going to want to have a, a, a clear sense of how much energy you're generating, how much you can store, and how you want to spend that energy on the various appliances within the house. Likewise, the batteries, if you do a battery backup with your solar, your battery pack is going to have a certain a storage capacity, uh, also typically measured in amp hours or kilowatt hours. And because that battery has a finite limit, there's only so much energy that's going to be available to you. Let's say we're in a grid down situation and your, your solar panels have produced energy during the day, but now it's nighttime, the sun has set, and so now you're, you're going to be drawing off the energy that's stored in your battery bank until the sun can come up the next day to, to recharge the battery. So again, you have to be mindful of how much energy you're consuming. And this is why one of the things we recommend for people that are serious about getting their house set up to run off the grid is that you minimize your electrical draw uh, by number one, just using energy efficient lighting and appliances wherever possible. And then number two is to use an alternate fuel source for your heating related activities. You know, heating and cooling is the top energy consumer within the modern home. And so if you can do the heating inside the home using an alternate fuel like uh, propane, natural gas, uh, wood or wood pellets, 
then that can really minimize your electrical demand in the house and help your renewable energy system go that much further for you. So again, you have to be very, very mindful about how much energy you need because the drawback with the solar system is there's only a certain amount of energy available or a certain amount of energy budget available for you each day. Let's take a look at the generator system now. Now the generator system typically has a power rating in kilowatts. Uh, the unit that's pictured here is a 16 kilowatt home standby generator. They now have these models that go up to uh, 22 kilowatts for home standby generator. And the advantage of the generator is that you could conceivably run this unit at full blast, 22 kilowatts, for as long as you like, as long as you're willing to consume the fuel and, and pay for the fuel that it takes to run the unit here. So with 22 kilowatts, you can run virtually your high, entire house. You could run your central air conditioner, you can run your, uh, um, your heat pump if it's winter time, uh, you could run your electric oven, your electric water heater. There's a lot that you can do uh, with 22 kilowatts worth of power. But again, it comes down to, do you want to burn that much fuel and are, are you willing to pay for it? You know, running a generator like this, even at half load for an entire day, you could easily burn 80 to $100 worth of propane fuel uh, each day. So for most people, that's not really practical. It's just, it's just too expensive. And then the other concern you have, of course, is how much fuel storage capacity do you have on your property? You know, if you're burning, let's say, uh, 50 gallons a day, even with the largest residential propane tank available, you're only going to be able to last 20 days in a grid down situation. So you have to consider, are you preparing for a long-term power outage or a long-term economic disruption where you really need something that's going to be truly sustainable, even for months or years at a time? Or are you preparing more for uh, infrequent short duration storm related power outages uh, in which case the generator might be a better solution for you that way you don't really have to worry about budgeting energy as long as you're willing to pay for the fuel cost and you have enough uh, storage capacity in your propane tank or your your gas uh, service then you can conceivably just continue on with your lifestyle as usual without having to worry about energy conservation or making any energy efficiency upgrades to your home. So again, it really comes down to what are you preparing for? Long-term major societal disruption or economic disruption, the solar renewable energy system is gonna be your best bet because you could run as long as you need with no counterparty risk, no need to purchase or store fuel. The generator backup is gonna be better for somebody who's preparing for a short-term and infrequent power outages and they wanna be able to continue their lifestyle as normal without having to make any adjustments. Well, as always, folks, if you find the information on this channel valuable, make sure you hit that like button and the subscribe button. And of course, be sure to share this information with others that you think will benefit from it. If you have a question, as always, you can post it in the comment section below and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. As always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.